Welcome to Old Treasures Made New, your devotional podcast on the go or at home, where we read the scriptures and reflect on them with those from the past. Today we're reading Mark 8, verses 22-26, and then through J.C. Ryle's expository thoughts on Mark. Please take a moment to pause and to ask the Holy Spirit to bring understanding and to apply what we hear. Mark, chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. And they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village, and when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees, walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. And he sent him to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. This is the word of the Lord. We do not know the reason for the peculiar means employed by our Lord Jesus Christ in working the miracle recorded in these verses. We see a blind man miraculously healed. We know that a word from our Lord's mouth or a touch from his hand would have been sufficient to effect a cure. But we see Jesus taking this blind man by the hand, leading him out of town, spitting on his eyes, putting his hands on him, and then, and not until then, restoring his sight. And the meaning of all these actions, the passage before us leaves us entirely unexplained. But it is well to remember in reading passages of this kind that the Lord is not tied to the use of any one means. In the conversion of men's souls, there are diversities of operation. But it is the same Spirit which converts. So also in the healing of men's bodies, there are varieties of agency employed by our Lord, but it was the same divine power that effected the cure. In all his works, God is a sovereign. He gives no account of any of his matters. One thing in the passage demands our special observation. The thing is the gradual nature of the cure which our Lord performed on this blind man. He did not deliver him from his blindness at once, but by degrees. He might have done it in a moment, but he chose to do it step by step. First, the blind man said that he only saw men as trees walking. Afterwards, his eyesight was restored completely and he saw every man clearly. In this respect, the miracle stands entirely alone. We need hardly doubt that this gradual cure was meant to be an emblem of spiritual things. We may be sure that there was a deep meaning in every word and work of our Lord's earthly ministry, and here, as in other places, we shall find a useful lesson. We see then in this gradual restoration to sight a vivid illustration of the manner in which the Spirit frequently works in the conversion of souls. We are all naturally blind and ignorant in the matters which concern our souls. Conversion is an illumination, a change from darkness to light, from blindness to seeing the kingdom of God. Yet few converted people see things distinctly at first. The nature and proportion of doctrines, practices, and ordinances of the gospel are dimly seen by them and imperfectly understood. They are like the man before us who at first saw men as trees walking. Their vision is dazzled and unaccustomed to the new world into which they have been introduced. It is not until the work of the Spirit has become deeper and their experience been somewhat matured that they see all things clearly and give to each part of religion its proper place. This is the history of thousands of God's children. They begin with seeing men as trees walking, and they end with seeing all clearly. Happy is he who has learned this lesson well, and is humble and distrustful of his own judgment. Finally, let us see in the gradual cure of this blind man a striking picture of the present position of Christ's believing people in the world compared with that which is to come. We see in part, and know in part, in the present dispensation. We are like those that travel by night. We know not the meaning of much that is passing around us, In the providential dealings of God with his children and the conduct of many of God's saints, we see much that we cannot understand and cannot alter. In short, we are like him that saw men as trees walking. But let us look forward and take comfort. The time comes when we shall all see clearly. The night is far spent. 
The day is at hand. Let us be content to wait and watch and work and pray. When the day of the Lord comes, our spiritual sight will be perfected. We shall see as we have been seen and know as we have been known. That is the end of Ryle's expository thoughts for these verses. Let us carefully consider what we have heard today, and may the Lord be pleased to bring the growth for His glory. In considering what we have just heard, would you prayerfully ask yourself and others the following questions? First, are we aware that God works in various ways, or do we think He must work in the way that we are most familiar? And second, are we humbled by the fact that there are more areas than we are likely aware of things that we do not yet understand, either in knowledge or practice? Does this give us grace in dealing with others? Do we find comfort in knowing that there is a day coming when we will see clearly?